1869, the pioneer railroaders had spanned the Missouri, driven their spikes across the western plains, and pierced the barrier of the Continental Divide. The rails of the Union Pacific and Western Pacific had joined at Promontory, Utah, completing the steel trail from the Atlantic to the Pacific. A race between a fast passenger train of the period and a stagecoach with six up was staged near the little railroad junction town of Cedar City in Colorado. The stage got off to a fast start. And the stage line operator, McCord, hoped he had seen the last of the belching iron horse. He had his best horses hitched to the stage, and his crack driver, Steve Margolis, was driving. As he looked back, he saw the Iron Monster steadily starting to pick up speed, the great drive wheels revolving faster and faster. It was a crucial race for McCord because on the outcome depended the very life of his stage line business. Without the government mail contract, he couldn't operate profitably. The government was threatening not to renew unless he could prove that his horses were as fast or faster than the railroad. Relentlessly, the thundering monster began to gain. At first, it only came abreast then even dropped back a little as the gallant horses urged by Margolis to their greatest effort plunged ahead in a magnificent burst of speed. But the killing pace told in the end, and as the tiring animals began to slow, their iron counterpart, never tiring, ever gaining momentum, roared ahead, and in a few minutes was lost in a cloud of black smoke. After the race, the day soon dawned when McCord was forced to sell his beloved stage line equipment to a buyer from California where railroads hadn't penetrated to any extent. They've been in there over an hour. I'm sure you want Father to make the very best deal possible, Mr. Hardy. You bet I do. If he gets half of what he owes my bank, I'll be happy. Louise, get me the ledger with the equipment cost figures, will you please? And what's going on in there? Ran the court selling his stage line, haven't you heard? How much is he getting for it? When do I hear? I'll explain it to Father. Now, look here, Margolis. You tell Rand McCord I gotta know where I stand in this matter. You'll know. Money, buzzard. Raise your thousand, McCord. You'd better start winning or your creditors will be badly disappointed. Either I'll win enough to pay off my debts 100% or... I'll go broke and start all over. Well, I'm afraid with my luck, your creditors will never know what an honest man you are. What's the value of the stock at the Westbridge stations, honey? And livestock, 700, and supplies well, Just are... give me the total, Louise. Well, in round figures, it's $2,000. You want to check on that? No, I'll take your word for it. You're a businessman after my own heart. Uh, call you a thousand. I'll raise you fifteen hundred. You are sure now you want to do this? Sure, I'm sure. If I lose, at least the railroads won't be getting it. All pink. Three jacks and a pair. Well. Banks don't know it yet, but they just lost a fistful of money. I'll buy you a drink, Mr. Gibson. Oh, thanks, no, Rand. I'll be busy here for a while, trying to figure out what I've won. Nothing but headaches, you can be sure of that. <laughs> Not in California. Uh, well, you show Mr. Gibson his way around, honey. I'm going over to Imperial and buy everybody in Cedar City a drink. Father. Or maybe it'll be the other way around. Everybody in Cedar City will buy me a drink. Look here, Rand. Bank money put you in business. You liquidated the stage line. I'll liquidate your debt. Stop crying, Ben. You'll get paid every last cent I owe you. Eventually. <laughs> Tell her that story, Bart. Which one is that? Do you remember? The old man. The old man. Two whiskeys. Well, I guess I'm out of a job. Well, you can thank the stinking railroads for that. 
I'm not through yet, Steve. Not by a long shot. Anything particular in mind? Uh-huh. You know, when I was your age, I spent most of my time Indian fighting all through the back country. I got to know it better than the back of my own hand. There's a million acres of land there nobody's ever claimed. Thousands of miles of mountains with freshwater streams where cattle can graze the whole year round. Man with a decent herd for a starter could do all right on that land. Cattle cost money. Well, maybe I still got some money. I like a man who can always look out for himself. Now, you've always got a job with me, Steve. What are your plans? I don't know yet. Maybe I'll clear out for a while. I'm fed up with town. Too many bankers, too close to the railroad. You always was a kind of a maverick, wasn't you? Go through the war with Quantrill's Raiders, and you'd be wearing a maverick brand, too. Well, I reckon we both know a couple of tricks those people who ride on plush cushion trains will never savvy. Steve Margoli! Bark! <laughs> Come here! Speak of the devil. That fellow rode with me under Quantrill. You want me to Oh, goodness. Now. You know all the gang George, here, George. Uh, Gail, he George. Ace. I see. Bartender, set up another round of drinks here. Put another glass up here from a friend. Come on, drink up, boys. Good. <laughs> it's good. Where are you hanging out? Who's that Steve's talking to? His name was Ketchum. Park Ketchum. Catch him the outlaw? Well, I wouldn't call him out of his face, but you're right. I wonder what he's doing in Cedar City. I don't know. It's the first time I've seen him around here. I agree that for the past six months, the Mountain Division of the Chicago and Pacific Transcontinental has had more than its share of wrecks and holdups. Obviously, this is more than the sporadic work of the occasional wreckers or bad men. There's a definite pattern behind the trouble, which has occurred with alarming regularity along a stretch of the railroad extending for about 50 miles in the vicinity of Cedar City. For that reason, I am sending one of our most... <clears throat> For that reason, I am sending one of our most capable railroad detectives to that area. His name is Bill Cameron. Spreading it on a little thick, aren't you, George? <laughs> well, if I don't toot your horn, the executives of the CNP won't know what they're getting. Uh, Bill Cameron will work closely with your division superintendent at Cedar City, but to ensure the success of the investigations, it is imperative that no one else in that territory know that a railroad detective is being sent there. Uh, considering Cameron's brilliant record in past cases, 
I have every confidence that he will clear up your trouble in due time. Sincerely, George Bryson, et cetera and so forth. Oh, uh, Miss Finney, that's to go to uh, J.D. Carverstone, President, Chicago and Pacific Transcontinental Railroad. Get it out just as soon as you can, will you please? Feeney got half of those notes, right? I'm going to be surprised. <laughs> About this trouble near Cedar City. You've kept me so busy on a dozen other jobs, I, I haven't kept up with it. Tell me, do we have anything to go on at all? No, not a thing. Going to be starting from scratch. And you're going to need some time to nose around without arousing suspicion. I think you better go in undercover. And then when you decide how you're going to handle it, I'll wire Angus McKendrick, the divisional superintendent there, to be on the lookout for you. Undercover, huh? How you been feeling, George? Huh? Had that run-down feeling lately? Suffering from arthritis, rheumatism, spots before the eyes, gout? Hey, what is this? What you need, George, is a bottle of Dr. R. Pell, secret to show the Indian remedy good for man or beast. Straightens out bow legs, clean harness leather, and guaranteed to grow hair on doorknobs. <laughs> You know, you really had me going there for a minute. <laughs> All right, fine. I'll wire Angus to be on the lookout for uh, <clears throat> Dark Arpel. <laughs> oh, here. Have another cigar. Yeah, I don't mind if I do. Go ahead, take a handful. Uh, much obliged, George. <laughs> Take this for the boss right away. Use a good horse. I want him to get it tonight. so you can hear everything I'm going to say. For each and every one of you, this is your moment for the starting of a new life. And why do I say a new life? Because in this bottle that I'm holding in my hand is a secret remedy. 
Yes, I said a secret remedy composed of natural herbs and Shoshone know-how. It'll make a new man out of every one of you. And yes, young lady, it'll make a new woman out of you, too. Why, such radiant beauty should never fade. Look at her, just her, ladies and gentlemen, an angel sent down from heaven to leave in Cedar City. And ma'am, so that you may always enjoy the vim, vigor, and vitality of perfect health, I'm not going to charge you a dollar, not even 50 cents, but I'm going to give you free as a gift a bottle of Dr. R. Pell's secret Shoshone Indian remedy. What do you say, ma'am? I say you can move your wagon so that I can get out of here. What's your hurry, ma'am? With the whole street, do you have to crowd in here? Do something, can't you? As I was about to say, ladies and gentlemen, Dr. R. Pell's secret remedy is good for man or beast. It'll bring light to your eyes, a smile to your lips, and put a spring on your step. Wait a minute, Louise, I'll move this buggy for you. All right, all right, step right up. Why suffer through the strains of modern living when you got Dr. R. Pell's remedy to see you through? Today's special introductory offer is only one dollar a bottle. Yes, I said one dollar. There's an intelligent looking gentleman. Thank you very much, sir. And here's a free bottle to speed you on your way to health. How many others? Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you, ladies, very much. Use it as a window cleaner or a spot remover. It works miracles. Tell me, Doc, is this stuff any good for rheumatism? Well, that all depends on what kind, sir. None of the boys working on the railroad have been having lots of trouble lately. Well, now, might just have the thing for him. I hope so. Bryson seemed to recommend it pretty highly. We've had some pretty good cures in the past. The big problem is getting it to cause of the trouble. If I could tell you that, I would. I'm Angus McKendrick, Division Superintendent. I figured as much. I'm Bill Cameron. Glad to know you. I don't think you're going to learn much here in town. Pretty sure the gang's got men spotted here, but they don't show themselves more than they can help. What about the back country? You may have better luck there. It's a fellow by the name of Rand McCord you ought to look up. He used to run the stage line until the railroads put him out of business. You think he might have something to do with these raids? Mm, not likely. He's ranching now. I just figured he'd know the back country better than anybody else, that's all. Well, thanks for the tip. I'll head out that way. Hate to see you go alone. But if the sheriff goes with you, it'll tip him off to the lawman. So be careful. These outlaws are killers. All right, thank you very much, sir. Thank you. your free bottle of Dr. R. Pell's Indian Remedy. I don't want it. I don't need any medicine. <laughs> All right. Could you tell me how to get to the McCord Ranch? They don't need any medicine either. What about the girl? If she gets in the way, it'll just be too bad.
up to find cover. Get up behind them rocks where we can get a shot at them without getting hit. you into this. No fault of yours. You couldn't help it. Yeah. down there. What's she doing in such bad company? There's also a railroad detective down there that'd like to hang us. What about him? We'll take care of him later. Let's go. Wait a minute. What about Red? He's dead. There's nothing to identify him. Well, that's funny. I wonder why they quit shooting all of a sudden. Maybe they heard someone coming. Yeah. And it might be a trap to get us out in the open. What in heaven's name are you looking for? I thought I told you to stay behind. I'm not in the habit of taking orders from strange men, especially medicine salesmen who go around getting themselves into gunfights and then end up by searching their victim's clothing. You didn't answer my question. What are you looking for? I guess there's no reason trying to keep a secret from you. Not when every outlaw and his cousin already knows what my job is here. My name's Bill Cameron. I'm a railroad detective trying to find out who's causing all the trouble for Chicago and Pacific. Then that's why they were shooting at you. I can't think of any better reason. But you haven't told me your name. Whether you're married or single. What kind of men you like and what you think of the railroad. Well, to tell you the truth, Mr. Cameron, I don't think very much of the railroads. They put my father out of business. My name is Louise McCord. Oh, I see. You know, I'm glad it's a small world. Why? Because if it was any larger, I might not run into you again. Tell me. Are you engaged? I imagine you question the lawbreakers for the same persistence, Mr. Cameron. But not with the same interest. Do I look like a girl too unpopular to have admirers? <laughs> of course not. You just added another one to your list. At least you're not married. Not yet, but you needn't worry. I'll never marry a railroad detective. <laughs> I won't worry. Not until I hear the preacher say the words over you and the wrong man. Meaning anyone but you? Of course. Got quite a spread here. 
He bought this ranch. He's done very well since the stage line went out of business. Must be a good rancher as well as a good businessman. He is. Don't count on too friendly a welcome when he finds out who you're working for. This is Ben Hardy's rig. He's president of the Cedar City National Bank. Oh. I wonder why he's calling on Dad. Well, you go ahead. I'll stay here. I don't want to go barging in while he's talking business. Thank you. Everyone knows you didn't sell the stage line, but lost it in a poker game. Yet with no money to show for it, you were able to buy this ranch and a thousand head of cattle and set yourself up in business. You were holding money out on us, McCord. Money you should have used to straighten out your debt. Ben, I've told you a hundred times I have to stay in business in order to pay my debts. Now, you'll get your money as soon as the cattle business pays off. I don't intend to wait that long. The cattle you own will liquidate 60% of your debt. And if that puts you out of business, it's just too bad. Ben, you give me a few more months. You won't have to settle for 60%. You can have it all. Well, I'll see what the stockholders have to say. Good afternoon, Miss McCord. Mr. Hardy. Is everything all right, Father? Oh, sure, sure, sure. I'll tell you one thing. If the West had to depend on the banks and the railroads to get settled, Chicago would still be the frontier. Speaking of railroads, we have a visitor. A railroad detective. Railroad detective? His name's Bill Cameron. Well, let's go out and meet him. Nobody's going to say we're unfriendly. Bill Cameron, this is my father, Mr. McCord. Howdy, Mr. McCord. My team bolted when some men began shooting at us. Men shooting at you? What men? Who was shooting at who? Our laws were shooting at me, Mr. McCord. Your daughter just happened to be there at the time. Steve, this is Bill Cameron. He's a <laughs> railroad detective. Oh, I thought he was selling snake oil. That's the general impression I'd hope to make, especially as far as the outlaws were concerned. But I guess I didn't fool anybody. Oh, I'd like to leave my rig here. Maybe you've got an extra saddle horse I could rent. I'll do better than that. Why don't you stay here and make this your headquarters while you look around? That would be fine. I appreciate your offer. Are you loving the railroads all of a sudden? No, Steve, I hate them like always. There's no sense being inhospitable on that account. Huh? Mm -hmm. Folks around here say just because I'm against the railroads, that means I'm against progress. Well, I reckon a lot depends on what you call progress. Just making it easy for a bunch of tenderfeet with dollars instead of muscles to come out west ain't, uh, in my opinion, going to improve the country much. You got a point there, Mr. McCord? Oh, dollars have their place all right. If the banks hadn't loaned me the money to get started in the cattle business, I'd been in pretty bad shape. Father overlooks the fact that without the railroad, he couldn't ship his cattle to market. Oh, well, I reckon the railroads have their place on. <laughs> the old wind doesn't blow something good, huh? How do you plan to catch up with the train robbers, Mr. Cameron? By putting salt on their tails? <laughs> I guess that would be about as good a way as any, provided I can get close enough to them. <laughs> you figure there's several gangs or just one causing all the trouble? Well, the way they've been working, I'd say it's one gang. Why do you say that? Because they're well informed and well organized, judging by what happened today. I'll tell you one thing. I ain't going to worry much about the poor. Railroads are getting robbed. Let's go outside, Steve. Excuse us, will you? that Steve doesn't like me. Oh, it's because you're a railroad man. Oh, I think it's more than that. Is he in love with you? Well, you can ask some of the darndest questions. Those questions are very important to me. There's more danger around you than just getting shot at. Excuse me, I think I'll go help Rosie.
Margolis coming up the trail. Old man Colder's trail herd's coming through tomorrow. I know it. Why this sudden switch to cattle? I thought we were concentrating on the railroad. We are. This is too good to pass up. And too easy to sell them at the construction camp at Eureka. We'll still be taking railroad money. Okay. I'll bushwhack anything or anybody as long as there's money in it. Who's keeping an eye on that railroad detective? I am. I won't be going with you. He'll be my alibi in case somebody wants to connect me with a raid. Sure, skinny bunch. Rustlers can't be choosers. <laughs> The boys killed. Five badly wounded in the chuck wagon's a wreck. Well, stay here and see what you can do for him. Me and Joe will ride to see the city and tell them about this. You consider him yours as long as you're here, Cameron. He's a sure-footed animal. Ought to take you most any place you want to go. I'm much obliged to you, sir. 
I'm going into town to see McKendrick. Anything I can do for you while I'm there? Not a thing. Going to Cedar City, too? Yeah, sure. Let's ride along together, huh? What's going on? It's all right, Mr. Okay, you about to talk to Arfell before I got here. Outlaws ran off with old man Calder's trail herd this morning near Granite Pass and wounded five of his riders. Doc Parker's on his way out there now. The sheriff's getting to go to Pussy to go after them. How far away is Granite Pass? It's a good four-hour ride. It'll be dark before they can pick up the trail. All right, men. Mount up. Let's get started. Just a minute, Sheriff. Bill Cameron, railroad detective. Glad to have you come along with us, Mr. Cameron, if you care to. But we've got to get started. We never will catch up with them outlaws. Sheriff, I've got a hunch they're heading for Eureka. The construction camp there is always in the market for beef. I could telegraph the construction bus that would be on the lookout for them. Tell them to go ahead and deal with whoever shows up with the herd, but keep stalling till we get there. Well, it's a half a day's ride to Eureka. Not by train, it isn't. How soon can the yard boss order up a special? Well, there's an engine and some empty boxcars on the side and right now. All right, having to fire up. We're getting the horse aboard. Right. Send us off to Jack Fergus at Eureka. Yes, sir. Keep them moving, and I'll see what kind of a deal I can make. You the construction boss? That's right. Heard he's in the market for cattle. Price is right. Price will be right. Come on out and look him over. Any reply from Fergus regarding that message I sent him? Well, oh, I'm sorry, Mr. McKendrick. I didn't send it yet. There was so much excitement in town, I, I guess I wasn't thinking straight. What? Couldn't you tell it was urgent? Well, I usually send the messages in the order they come in. There were so many others ahead of it. You get that message up to Fergus right now, understand? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Sure, they're poor. The range hasn't been too good this year. That's why I'm willing to come down on the price. How much? Make an offer. From Cedar City, it's urgent. Send word back. I'll take care of it. I don't like to rush into a deal like this. Let's go back to the office. We got a long ride ahead of us. I'm not sure I want your beef. What's the idea? You're in the market for cattle. You're buying them all the time to feed that construction crew. I'll give you a dollar a head. 
Are you crazy? I can get that for the hides. Check the figures on the last cattle I bought. All right. Stop stalling. Let me see that telegram. Come on, let me see it. Get back. I thought so. You've got just five seconds to open that safe. Move! All right, men, get the horses out. Come on, open it. Any more stolen, you won't live to tell about it. Hold us here till dark. I'm gonna take some men and try to get around behind them. You and Hank hold up at the river shack. Pete and Ace hang out at Marl Cassidy's. Whenever things in the clear, I'll get in touch with you. Come on, we'll head for the Pinnacles.
flat-footed. Yeah, they sure did. Somebody that gang's real smart. I'd like to know who it is. Country sheriff? Well, there used to be some old abandoned mine shacks back in there that could be used for hideouts. But it'd be suicide to try and surprise them. I don't know about that. You know a shortcut there? I don't think so. All right, let's take it. All right, this way. I'll take a look. That's a good guess, Sheriff. Hey, look. There's only three of them. We'll try to get them to surrender. Everybody get out of sight. Hide your horse. Why did you shoot him? Made a move for a six gun. I thought he was going to fire. Yeah. That man was our last chance to find out about the rest of the gang.
Well, old man Coulter and his son were sure glad to get their cattle back. They sold them to Fergus. What's next on the schedule? Oh, try to round up the rest of the gang, especially their leader. You don't think Park Ketchum was their leader? I don't know. But that writer that turned up and created a diversion just when things were looking good for us. I want to find out who he is. That was an odd thing. Yeah. It was an old Quantrell trick. Instead of leading his men on a raid, he sends in a lieutenant that stays in the background watching. Do you suspect anyone else? Well, I'm not entirely satisfied with some of the answers Steve Margolis has been giving us. Say, what about that telegraph operator to held up the message to Fergus? Gone, lit out. He must have been working for the outlaws, all right. Well, that gang's not broken up yet. They'll lay low just as long as they know we're around. How much gold do you think you can raise? Well, $10,000 shouldn't be too hard to scrape up. I figure they need a lot of money, that gang. And gold's about the only thing they want. Now, here's the plan I've got in mind. I'm going to say goodbye, Mr. McCord. I've been called back to headquarters. Oh, you um, mean your work's all done here? Well, with their leader dead and their hideout discovered, what's left of the gang, I don't think, will cause any more trouble. Oh, I say, there'll be a man out in a few days to pick up my team and wagon. Well, that'll be fine. You can leave my horse to the Cedar City Stables. I'll pick it up later. I appreciate your help. It's a pleasure. Even if you do work for the <laughs> railroad. I'll say, where's Louise? I'd like to say goodbye to her. She's in the house. I don't think she's going to be too happy about you leaving us. <laughs> I've come to say goodbye. I just told your father that I was leaving on the afternoon train for Kansas City. Oh, well, I'm glad everything turned out so well for you here. Well, there's something I'd like to explain, but maybe I'd better not right now. Not now, but... But why, Bill? I'm sorry, Louise, but when I tell you, I, I'm sure you'll understand. finish here. He doesn't think that gang will reorganize. I wouldn't count on it. What's the newspaper? Take it inside. I'll read it later. I hear the railroad detectives leaving. You better miss them. I don't know, Steve. I have to get things straight in my mind. Maybe in a few days, I'll be able to think clearer. Louise. You know how I feel about you. All right, Steve, in a few days.
nothing moved out there for the last half hour. They're probably looking to blaze over my distance. Maybe they don't figure to use that wood stop for the holdup. I think they will. Let's don't get caught off guard again. Sheriff, I want to look around. like I ran out of McCord luck. Railroads. I'm gonna die hating them. I only stole back from them what they took from me in the first place, honey. I organized the whole gang, Ketchum, Steve, and all the rest. Father. And there's gold in those bags, honey. Enough to pay off the banks. It's yours now, girl. Use it. 
can't believe it. I kind of messed things up, didn't I? I'm sorry. I'm sorry you had to find out about your father this way. There's nothing for you to worry about. I'll take care of you. With that money, the ranch will be ours. No, well, Steve, no, I couldn't do that. It's stolen money. It's only money your father would have had if the railroads hadn't put him out of business. It's not the same. Listen, I'll have to go out of town for a few weeks until this wound heals. But then I'll be back. Things will be quieted down. We can get married. Oh, Steve, please. Go away and don't ever come back. I never want to see you again. What about the money? I'll return it to the railroad. You little fool. No, you can't, Steve. Listen, I'm taking this. And you're not going to say anything about it. Get outside. I'll need a fresh horse and you'll have to saddle him for me. Go on. Wait a minute. I said inside you weren't going to say anything about me taking this money. I meant it. No! Son of a gun, you. Hi, George. <laughs> hey, where have you been? You left Cedar City weeks ago. What kept you? I guess I should have told you sooner, but I've got a new boss. New? Oh, now, wait a minute. You can't do that to us. Why, well, you're our most valuable man. Mm. Awful glad to hear you say that, George. I just might hit you up for a raise sometime. For a... Oh, now, what is this? <laughs> I guess I might as well get this over with and let you meet the new boss. Come in, dear. Mr. Bryson, I want you to have the pleasure of meeting the person who will be giving me all of my orders from now on, Mrs. Belle Cameron. How do you do? Oh, hello. <laughs> oh, Bill, this is wonderful, absolutely wonderful. 